Welcome students. In this session, we will discuss historical foundations of library. Library history is essential in the history of the intellectual development of civilization. Library is the repository of human culture, oral and written. It is a social institution and system. Each society has a social structure, a network of relationship among individuals and groups. Library history is an interesting chronology of the cultural existence of man. The heritage of man has been preserved for posterity in different containers of information. Library history is also mixed up with these containers from clay tablets to computers. Libraries tend to prosper when a combination of certain social, political and economic conditions exist in a society. They develop during a stable social climate where individuals pursue their leisure activities on the arts and culture and also on intellectual creativity. Libraries can also flourish when the parent organization such as school, college, government institution feel the necessity and importance of their member libraries. Finally, economic prosperity and a surplus of wealth are also needed to provide the financial support for the growth of the library. The history of libraries can be chronologically divided according to the time period by the following ways. First, ancient times. The earliest libraries were found in the very early civilizations in Egypt, Mesopotamia, Palestine and Crete. Sumerians lived in the cities between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. They stored the earliest written records in their temples. Sumerians had established private religious and government libraries by 2700 BC. The library at Tello was reputed to have a collection of 30,000 clay tablets. In Assyria, the libraries were attached to the royal palaces. Assyrian king Ashur Banipal lived from 668 BC to 626 BC. He established the renowned library in Nineveh which contained 25,000 clay tablets. Ancient Egypt had a number of private, temple and government archives. The establishment of the first library has been attributed to Ramses II of Egypt. The establishment of the library of Alexandria in Egypt may be called the greatest achievement in the library history of ancient times. Another important library was founded by Emini II between 197 to 159 BC at Pergamum. It remained in active use for nearly a hundred years. It is believed that Antony gave it to Cleopatra. The Greeks' passion for learning made possible the great library at Alexandria. This library was established by the early Ptolemics about 330 BC. The destruction by fire of the collection of this library was an incalculable loss in the history of scholarship. Private libraries were maintained in the villas of Romans during the golden age of Latin literature between 70 BC to 14 AD. But Julius Caesar was the first to plan for a public library. He could not accomplish it but his friend Asinius Pollio became the first to establish the public library. There were 28 public libraries in the capital city of Rome. By the middle of 4th century AD, the papyrus roll was the principal book in ancient times. Second, Middle Age A. The Early Middle Age The important public libraries of the Christian era are Pope Damascus between 366 to 384 and Saint Gregory between 590 to 604. Flavius Magnus Cassidorus established the first medieval scriptorium for copying manuscripts. The parchment codex was the typical volume in medieval libraries. The contribution of Isidore Seville 
about 636 AD towards the cultural progress of the middle age was also worthy. b. The period of feudalism. This period was marked by the need for protection against barbarian invaders. The monastery became the retreat of literature and learning in such a time of insecurity. The capture of Jerusalem by Seljuk Turks led to the Crusades which began as religious wars. The most significant results of the Crusades was that 20th century Europe had become the highly developed civilization of the East. The particular important event in this period was the rise of universities and the adoption of vernacular or language of masses. The outstanding universities of this period were the universities of Bologna, Paris, Prague, Heidelberg, Oxford and Cambridge. There were about 80 universities in Europe by the end of the Middle Ages and every college in the university had its own library. See the late Middle Age or pre-modern age. The interest in wide learning quickened in the Renaissance. 14th and 15th century scholars brought Latin texts and also started to secure the Greek texts. The flame of Renaissance burnt most brightly in Italy and the libraries of fine manuscripts were formed in Venice, Florence and other Italian towns. Societies became more secure and economic trade between countries developed during this time and all the conditions seemed to be favorable for the development of libraries. There was enough wealth to begin large libraries such as Vatican Library, the Sorbonne Library at the University of Paris and State and Royal Libraries. The university's libraries and municipal libraries were established in United Kingdom to preserve culture and knowledge. Demand for books increases during the age of Renaissance and Reformation. It could not be satisfied by the handwritten manuscripts. The need for faster medium for transmitting thought and knowledge was urgent. Paper was invented in China in 105 AD. The art of printing was also begun first in China in 868 AD. The oldest dated printed book was the Chinese version of the famous Diamond Sutra in 868 AD. The invention of printing is attributed to Johann Gutenberg. The Chinese have been also credited with the invention of movable type. The effect of invention of printing had dispelled the ignorance and cultural darkness of the Middle Age. It resulted in an inestimable increase in the supply of books, the greater diffusion of knowledge and dissemination of literature. The contents of books also began to change. Copernicus, Galileo, Tycho, Brahe, etc. began to disseminate new ideas of the universe and in this changing cultural context, library could find a prominent role to play. Third, age of rationalism and enlightenment. Galileo, Kepler, Francis Bacon, Descartes, etc. focused on the basis of science in this new scientific era. Periodical was first published in 17th century and the newspaper was first appeared in the late 17th century. The first modern encyclopedia was published in Switzerland in 1630. A number of court libraries were founded in the 17th century and these libraries were later developed into national libraries. The most important event in this century was the establishment of the Oxford's Bodleian Library in 1602. During the end of the 17th century, Royal Society in 1660 and Paris Library and many philosophical, scientific and medical societies came into existence. With the French Revolution in 1789, church libraries became the national property and the libraries of the immigrants were confiscated. Great number of books were taken from their owners and collected in large depots. Many books were assigned to university libraries, but the largest share was given to the French Royal Library. 
which was renamed La Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. Industrial revolution stimulated the growth of mass education and political consciousness. A new kind of library was developed to meet all the new demands for books for the people, the subscription and circulating library. This kind of library loaned books on payment of a fee. The earliest subscription library was founded by a French bookbinder in Berlin in 1704. There were others in France and England in the early part of the 18th century. And one of the most famous was the library company founded by Benjamin Franklin in Philadelphia in 1731, fourth, 19th century. This century was proved to be the most fertile period for growing prestigious national libraries throughout the world. Some of these national libraries might have had an earlier date of the foundation, but the main emphasis on the national characters, state recognition, security of consistent growth and organizational and administrative improvements has been witnessed in this century. Some of these national libraries were the British Museum, La Bibliothèque Nationale, the Library of Congress and the Lenin State Library. Another important impact of this century was the development of public library. There has been an increasing acceptance of the library idea throughout the globe. The development of specialized library was also a cultural trend of this century. 20th century. The social, economic and cultural conditions were also favorable to library development in this century. Urban areas were growing, a dynamic nation needed trained persons to work in new occupations. The democratic ideal of equal opportunity of education and provision of books for all has found expression through establishment of public libraries. This century has also initiated the growth of academic and special libraries in order to preserve the predominance of achievement knowledge. This century has been notable for the provision of libraries in schools and for the appearance of industrial and research libraries offering intensive specialized information source. The Indian scene First, Ancient Times the Indus Valley Civilization was dated during 2700 BC to 1750 BC, but there is no reliable evidence of the materials existed. During the Vedic period between 1500 to 400 BC was a vast amount of religious and secular literature such as the Vedas, Samhitas, Upanishads and Sutras came into existence. It was during the time of Ashoka between 269 to 232 BC that his promulgations were inscribed on stone pillars and rocks in two different scripts to become the first official records in public places. These inscriptions are regarded as the first libraries of India. The memorials and shrines built with sculptures of Buddha's birth stories and discourses served as open libraries. In 400 AD, there existed one of the renowned universities in Nalanda. It maintained a big library. It could cater to the needs of thousands of students and hundreds of teachers. Fahian, Huyansang, Itzing and other Chinese scholars used this library. The library is reported to have flourished until the 12th century. From the accounts of Fahian, it is known that important Mahayana monasteries used to maintain their respective libraries. According to Hyun Sang, there existed a palace library in Kashmir and other Buddhist libraries at Tamralipti, now Tamluk in West Bengal, and at 24 monasteries including Jitevana monastery. These libraries held Buddhist scriptures and commentaries. They preserved mainly palm leaf manuscripts. In ancient India, other well-known centers of learning were Khatyava, Takshasila, Vikramsila, Jagaddala, Odantipuri, Mithila, Nadia and Banaras. 
Each of these centers had good libraries. In South India, Nagarjuna Vidya Peet flourished about 7th century AD on the banks of Krishna. Its library was replete with Buddhist literature. Second, Medieval Times Libraries in medieval India occupied a significant place in the cultural development of the country. Libraries were established in different parts of the country. Jalal Uddin Kilji in 1290 was himself a poet and established the imperial library and appointed Amir Khusru, the celebrated poet musician, as the librarian. Sheikh Nizamuddin Aulia, the great religious Muslim leader of this period, established a library with a large collection of manuscripts by raising public donation. In Kashmir, Zainul Abdin possessed a large library. The rulers of Bijapur, Golconda, Gujarat, Khandesh of this period had their own libraries. Narayana founded some public institution in 1058 AD. Chati Kalasala was one of them, was a big residential college with a good library. During this period, paper was scarce and costly and the olding of the library was either palm leaf or parchment manuscript. Learning was not popular and the general people were mostly uneducated. They had no urge for library service and the libraries were mostly maintained by the royal patronage. The Mughal emperors from Babur to Aurangzeb maintained their palace libraries. The first Mughal library was established by Babur in 1526. Humayun himself was a scholar and bibliophile. He shifted the imperial library from Delhi to Agra. Jahangir enriched the collections of the imperial library. Akbar established a library at Fatehpur Sikri for spreading education among women. The rulers of Mysore, Jaipur and Deccan had also established their own libraries. The contemporary libraries of this period having valuable collections were Maharaja Chikadevaraya between 1672 to 1704 of Mysore, Maharaja Sawai Jai Singh between 1699 to 1743 of Jaipur. Johann George Berhler noted a very prosperous temple library credited to King Boja of Dhar. One of the oldest libraries having still in existence is the Saraswati Mahal Library of Tanjore. It was founded in 1523 and contains more than 20,000 manuscripts. Remarkable Hindu collections of medieval India were also found at Ujjaini, Varanasi, Bikaner, Kashmir and Nepal. The Jesuits gained their hold in India in 16th century. They possessed a library at Agra and Mogur. The Jesuits introduced printing in India in 1556. The British paved the library movement in modern India. The East India Company established a library at the Fort St. George in Madras, third modern period. The spirit behind the early European libraries in India was the missionaries. Calcutta began to develop as one of the principal English settlements from 1690. The fort in Calcutta had a public library in the early 1770. The establishment of the Asiatic Society in Calcutta in 1784 was an early manifestation of scholarly pursuit. This society along with its library has played a significant role in the cultural history of modern India. The college at Fort William was established in 1800 whose library was made public in character. The Calcutta Public Library was established as a reference and circulating library in 1836. This library was handed over to the official control in 1903 and that the Imperial Library was founded. This Imperial Library is the predecessor of National Library of India. A number of libraries also established in that time were Sanskrit College in 1824, Calcutta Medical College in 1835, 
Calcutta University Library in 1873 and the Indian Association of Cultivation of Science in 1876. The Bombay University Library came into existence in 1864 by the donation from a merchant prince of Bombay, Premchand Roychand. The Madras University Library was founded in 1914. The East India Company took active interest in establishing special libraries to cater to the needs of specialized agencies sponsored by the company. The Geographical Survey of India Library in Calcutta in 1851 is the oldest one. This library with its rich collections is regarded as one of the outstanding special libraries in the world. The Royal Asiatic Society had its library in Bombay in 1904. Baroda was covered by a network of public libraries during the rule of Saiji Rao Gayakwar III. Thus, it is evident in that library movement in India began with the advent of British rule in the modern period. Now, let us summarize this session. This unit deals with the history of libraries. The history of libraries can be chronologically divided according to the time period into three main time frames, ancient times, middle age and the modern age. The ancient library history was flourished simultaneously with the Sumerian, Babylonian, Assyrian and Egyptian civilizations. It was also the golden age for Latin literature. There were 28 public libraries in the capital city of Rome by the middle of 4th century AD. The papyrus roll was the principal book in ancient times. It was a time of insecurity for literature and learning due to feudalism in the early middle age. But renaissance and reformation in the late middle age accelerate the demand for books and in this changing cultural context, library could find a prominent role to play. In the modern age, the social, economic and cultural conditions were favorable to the library development. A number of public, national, special, school and college libraries were established and the concept of librarianship began to grow. Here are some questions for you to work out. Make a project about the history of National Library of India and also the history of the British Museum. Why it is essential to know the history of the libraries? Second, what do you know about the library history in ancient Egypt? Third, library could find a prominent role to play in the late middle age of history. Explain why. I can suggest some books for your further reading. Chakrabarti, Bhubaneswar, Library and Information Society, Calcutta, The World Press, Diringer D, The Alphabet, Key to the History of Mankind, Third Edition, London, Hutchinson, Foskett, DJ, Pathways for Communication, Books and Libraries in the Information Age, London, Clive Bingley, McGarry, KJ, The Changing Context of Information and Introductory Analysis, London, Clive Bingley. Thank you for watching this session. See you next time. Until then, goodbye.